Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, October 31st. Happy Halloween, 528 a.m. Central Time. December corn futures up a half cent at 478 and three quarters. January soybeans down two at 1305 and a quarter. December Chicago wheat down five and a half at 560 and a half. December Kansas City wheat down five and three quarters at 639 and a quarter. December spring wheat down two at 715 and three quarters. Let's uh, start off with the wheat market. I'm often accused of not talking about wheat enough. So let's start off there. So reduced importer demand coupled with a decline in supply caused Russian wheat export prices to stagnate last week. Russia is projected to export 4.4 million tons of wheat this month, down from 4.5 million tons last year. Russia's wheat harvest as of last Thursday totaled 93.6 million tons, down from 104.5 million tons last year. Also in Black Sea Grain news this week, Ukraine's grain exports have decreased nearly 50% this month compared to October of last year. So Vicon said in their report, Russian grain is priced competitively at the moment, but demand from buyers is muted. If Russia is having trouble selling wheat, uh, the U.S. is going to have trouble selling wheat as well because uh, we are priced a little bit higher than them. And, and the wheat in the United States that competes with Russia is largely HRW wheat and the book of export sales there is poor. We have seen some kind of odd abnormal business uh, to China in terms of SRW wheat out of the U.S. The, the book of export sales there is actually pretty good. On the Ukraine note, uh, Ukrainian corn is like the cheapest there is on the export market. Their problem is is that they have logistics uh, restraints and they can't ship as much as they would like to perhaps. I've got an HRW wheat chart um, and this is actually interesting. So this is the December Kansas City contract. We went down yesterday and kind of tagged this uh, trend line. And this is just a simple line on a simple chart, but somebody was watching it because the, the market did bottom there and then rallied back. It was kind of a reversal to the upside. I couldn't give you a fundamental reason why uh, wheat would bottom here, but we've come down a lot. I mean, you look at those uh, pre-invasion highs from second quarter of last year and, and we have really dropped off. So could you see some sort of recovery? I suppose maybe some technical evidence to suggest that, but fundamental outlook still doesn't uh, look great to me. U.S. soybean shipments declined last week. USDA reported that 69 million bushels of soybeans were inspected for export during the week ending October 26th. The print was down 28 percent compared to the previous week and 27 percent versus the same week last year. Corn shipments increased 18 percent versus the prior week at 21 million bushels. Wheat shipments increased to 70 million bushels, up 12% compared to the prior week and 38% versus the same week last year. Okay, so we are in prime time U.S. soybean shipping season right now. And this print yesterday, 1.9 million, it sounds good, but it's really not. Let me show you a chart with some better context here. This is a seasonal chart of U.S. soybean inspections, your weekly net. And for this particular week of the year, this was the third worst print of the last 10 years. And the only two years that were worse were 2018 and 2019 when we were essentially in trade war territory with China. They, they weren't buying beans and we were shipping a lot less. So this this is not where we need to be at all. And you've got to keep in mind the uh, book of US export sales is off almost 30% versus the same period last year. You can't ship what you haven't sold. There was some chatter last week and into early this week that some Brazilian soybean cargos had been shifted to the US Gulf. I have yet to see any evidence of that uh, reported from USDA or elsewhere. Maybe you see a flash sale today or tomorrow. Uh, keep a lookout for that. But that 1.9 million, it's, it's, not, it's not a good print, uh, even though it sounds good. Levels on the Mississippi River are expected to rise drastically. Drastically, The gauge at Memphis is 8.7 feet below normal this morning after bottoming at a record low of 12 feet below normal on October 17th. The Army Corps now projects that the river, the river will rise by an additional 4 feet by Tuesday next week. Anything five feet below normal or lower is considered a low stage. The projections indicate that the river will be back to levels that resemble normal by next week. Yeah, they're talking an additional improvement here of four or five feet just in the next week, which is very, very much welcome. Uh, this uh, ideally would stimulate some export demand, help basis to improve. Uh, you can get these barges moving at full capacity or at least increased capacity uh, this would be very very good and and i hope the army corps is right here and this uh turns out how they 
uh, expect. So if you guys are not already subscribed to our premium content, you need to check it out. Joe, can you tell me about the video you put together yesterday regarding carbon capture? Carbon capture is a big deal. Carbon sequestration. Uh, Navigator canceled this pipeline for a number of reasons. Corey Levinsky from S&P Global was on with me yesterday. He is an expert on this topic. Uh, we discussed the reasons for the cancellation of the pipeline. You know, essentially what they want to do is they want to take this CO2 from your ethanol plants and places like that and uh, put it underground, pipe it to uh, different states. And in this instance of Navigator, they were going to pipe um, CO2 from places like Iowa and South Dakota, Minnesota to somewhere in Illinois. And uh, we discussed all of this and, and what is the future uh, of this as it relates to, um, you know, things like sustainable aviation fuel and, um, and, uh, all the tax credits that are associated with this. It's a hot topic. Um, we've been on top of this and you guys should subscribe and, uh, see these videos. This is must, must watch stuff. The earth is really kind of moving under our feet here as it relates to policy carbon capture, all of this, th these green initiatives. You got to stay on top of it. Uh, go to standardgrain.com. You sign, can sign up this morning. I'll send you over that video. This is a $50 per month subscription. Cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. Just a ton of info direct from us every single business day, guys. Dry conditions have slowed Brazilian soybean planting. According to Ag Rural, as of last Thursday, Brazil's soybean crop was 40% planted. Uh, during the same period last year, planting was 46% complete. This season's planting pace has been hindered due to, due to dry conditions. Ag Rural also reported that 53% of Brazil's first 23-24 corn crop had been planted. Last year at this time, 56% of the crop was planted. So they're behind a little bit. The, the story generally is that they've been too dry in the north and too wet in the south. It's too early to sound the alarm here. Um, they're, they're in the middle of planting. I don't think anybody's going to get too worked up about it. The soybean market uh, had a shot at kind of taking out some recent highs yesterday, and uh, those recent highs were rejected. So I don't think the trade is, is overly excited here yet. U.S. row crop harvest remains ahead of schedule despite recent rains. The U.S. corn crop was 71% harvested through Sunday compared to 66% on average. The U.S. soybean crop was 85% harvested compared to 78% on average. States that remain well behind schedule include Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Yeah, those like north, uh, northeast portions of the Corn Belt, I guess, have been slower, but uh, everything kind of moving along uh, according to schedule here, I guess. Uh, U.S. winter wheat conditions are above average. In its first national crop rating of the growing season, the USDA rated the crop 47% good to excellent, compared to 45% on average and 26% last year. Conditions in SRW areas of the Midwest are generally better than HRW areas in the Plains. The crop was 84% planted through Sunday, compared to 85% on average. Yeah, so you look at your big HRW areas. Texas is only 41% good to excellent. Oklahoma is 42. Kansas is only 32. And then you look at the Midwest, Illinois 65, Indiana 72. Um, Ohio is 81% good to excellent. Uh, northwest part of the country, kind of a mixed bag. So you've still got drought in a lot of these areas. I mean, you look at Kansas, um, that is, there's still drought across a lot of these uh, winter wheat areas. So we could uh, use some improvement there, certainly. A group of California farmers allege a Silicon Valley backed company coerced them into selling their land using unfair tactics. The company is trying to build a sustainable green city northeast of San Francisco. The company originally filed a lawsuit against the farmers back in May that alleged they had conspired to inflate the value of their land. The company is now the largest landowner in the area, having invested about $800 million to acquire at least 52,000 acres of agricultural land. I don't know a damn thing about what goes on in California in terms of agriculture. Maybe this is a cautionary tale. We know that there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of money that wants to own farmland, and right. it sounds like there was some manipulation here. I don't know. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there are land sales that go on where you don't actually know who the buyer is. There's LLCs and, you know, all sorts of things that buy up land. I don't know. It's kind of scary. Right. It's kind of a sketchy deal. And it's really going to be interesting how this plays out, how it's both. It's like a he said, she said situation going back and forth.
Yeah, that's that's a weird deal. Uh, cattle tried to recover yesterday. Yeah, they were a little bit higher. Feeder cattle futures closed an average of 68 cents higher. Live cattle futures closed an average of 88 cents higher. Box beef also had a positive day. Choice ended the day at 309.28. That was up a buck 71. That's actually the highest print we have seen se since September 11th. And select ended the day at 280.89. That was up 77 cents. Outside markets on Tuesday, guys, U.S. dollars off a little bit. Stocks marginally higher. Bonds are up. Crude oil is up 77 cents at 83.08. It's been kind of stuck in the mid-80s despite all this stuff in the Middle East. Have a great day, guys. Happy Halloween. We'll talk to you on Wednesday.